Hello, Clint Pollock, Principal Solutions Architect with Veracode to demonstrate the installation and configuration of the Veracode Jenkins plugin. To get started, we recommend having an application profile pre-set up that you can use during configuration and having an API account that you can leverage to connect to the Veracode platform. To get the Veracode API account, reach out to your Veracode application security team. It looks like this. We create a new user. We select Customer API. We give this user a team membership to restrict access to which application profiles that it can upload and retrieve results from. And then we give it the upload API submit only role and the results API role so that it can check to see if the scan is complete and if the build has passed or failed. Here in the help center, we can see that the upload and scan API provides a number of capabilities that the upload submit only does not provide. The biggest one that the upload and scan API allows for is to create a new application. When applications are created, they do use application licenses. So it's important to have some control over this and prevent application teams from creating app profiles on the fly without some oversight. This is why we suggest creating the application profiles in advance and giving the teams an API account with upload API submit only, as well as the results API so it can check on scan status and determine if the application has passed or failed policy in the event you're breaking the build. Breaking the build isn't suggested out of the gate though, and we'll talk about that in more detail towards the end of this video. Let's go ahead and install the Veracode Jenkins plugin. To do that, download the Jenkins plugin file. Then within your Jenkins, go into the plugin manager, click on the advanced tab, and upload the plugin. Once installed, you can click on the install tab, scroll to the bottom, and you should see the Veracode Jenkins plugin. There is no configuration on this screen. Next, let's configure the Veracode Jenkins plugin. Click on manage Jenkins. Then go to configuration and you should see the Veracode section here inside of this configuration area. First, enter in the API ID and key that was generated from the Veracode API account. It suggested that we don't fail the job out of the gate. There's certainly places to fail the job, but you don't want to do it in your main pipeline out of the gate. We want to be able to scan the application, get a baseline, understand what flaws exist, perhaps fix some of those flaws. And once we've optimized the report by doing that, then it's a good time to start integrating with your build server and even bug tracking systems. Failing the job requires the plugin to pull the platform and wait for the scan to complete. Although most scans finish very quickly with Veracode, if five or 10 minutes is not something that the team is willing to wait, we suggest you look into the Veracode pipeline scanner. Typically, we're going to pre-create the application profile and therefore we don't need to worry about this setting, but it's a good idea to use the Jenkins project build number as the default scan name. Now we're ready to insert the Veracode step into a freestyle job. It's a good idea to make sure your project builds successfully before adding the Veracode step. It's also a good idea to make sure that we have optimized the upload for Veracode. Be sure to check the compilation guide at help.veracode.com and prepare your application based on those instructions. It's also a good idea to make a compression step where we create a zip file, likely called veracode.zip, where you actually optimize the application, perhaps deleted files, cleaned up the build, and then ultimately put in the application into a zip file that you send up to Veracode. This is going to make the upload go faster, and it's going to help us ensure that we've uploaded the correct parts of the application to Veracode so we don't have additional false positives. I've confirmed that my application is building properly. In this case, we are building Verademo.war, and that's what will be uploaded to Veracode. Now, this is a simple app, but for many apps which are more complex, you're going to want to double check what is being uploaded to Veracode and consider adding a step that will zip up the proper application files you want to send to Veracode. This is important because we need to ensure that the proper application build is being sent to Veracode. And this ensures the best and most complete scan. If we're adding a bunch of extra modules or websites that perhaps are not relevant, that will add a lot of additional findings to the application profile that may not be relevant. So be sure to check the application and make sure it's prepared properly for Veracode scanning. We'll know more once the application has been uploaded and we can look at the pre-scan results for this app. Now we're ready to configure the freestyle job for a Veracode upload. Go into your job, click configure, and scroll down to the post build actions. You can add a post-build action called Veracode Upload and Scan. Let's put in our application name and enter the sandbox name such as Daily Build. 
I've pre-configured my application profile and I've also set up a daily build sandbox. Sandboxes can be used for lots of things. It's a good idea to have at least one sandbox that's submitting on a regular basis, perhaps daily or as often as code changes. Developers can use sandboxes to preview their own changes, to look at microservices or components, and we can also tie them with build servers like this. Don't forget to take a look at the Veracode pipeline scanner and the ID plugins that we offer to help shift left in the development process. If we don't enter a sandbox name, the scan will be submitted for a policy scan. Keep in mind, the policy scan is what we use for governance, so it is critical that applications get a static policy scan. The sandboxes are meant to help preview and help developers fix any flaws that may be up and coming before we get to a policy scan. To submit a policy scan, you likely would do that later down the development cycle during a release stage. And it will be submitted to Veracode simply for a verification step to show that there are no flaws that need to be addressed within that production build. Generally, the policy scan would reflect what is running in production. The next thing we'll do is change this from jar to war, but keep in mind best practice would be to create a compression step where you put the war or war files, or depending on what language you're dealing with, inside of a zip file that allows you to optimize what is being uploaded to Verico. This is going to decrease the upload time, decrease scan times, and of course decrease false positives if we have this application configured properly for a Veracode scan. And that basically comes down to uploading the built application generally with the bug symbols. But refer to the help.veracode.com compilation guide for specific instructions on the language you're using. Checking this box is going to have Jenkins wait for the scan to complete. It will have to pull the Veracode platform until the results are available to understand if the application has passed or failed. If it's failed, it will fail the job. This also allows you to import some of the summary results into Jenkins so that you can have a Veracode summary in the Jenkins job itself for all of the different types of security findings. This is definitely handy and something you can try experimenting with. Generally, however, you're not going to fail your main pipeline. You're going to want to set up some side pipeline, for example, that might run this and fail. Generally, daily is more than enough. The reason daily is more than enough is because at first we're trying to gather data. How bad is it? How good is it? How many flaws are we creating per week? How many flaws are we fixing per week? Once we've established the process and the means to the end, being able to provide build server integration, ID integration, and bug tracking integration will allow these developers to create an application that is continually secure. So it's important to at least establish a daily build static scan. And from there, we can determine which development teams are adding more flaws than others. Now, most development teams are not adding many flaws per day. Most of the flaws are already going to be there on the first scan. Our job is to help them remediate those existing, especially very high or high severity items, and then not add new flaws from this point forward. At a minimum, doing a daily static scan and importing those results into a bug tracking system will work very well. And from there, you can begin using things like the Veracode pipeline scanner to break builds, let's say on a merge, and even the Veracode IDE scanners to help developers commit code that is free of any type of flaws to begin with. Okay, let's save the build and run it. All right, the build job is running, and here we can see that the Veracode plugin is uploading to the daily build sandbox. We're uploading verademo.war. And now the application has been submitted for scanning. Next, let's go to the Veracode platform and review the modules. This is important for every new application and even on an ongoing basis, especially if something changes in the score dramatically from scan to scan. That might mean that the modules that were uploaded have changed and we want to get to the bottom of why that is. Automation with the build server is great because we can enable consistency from scan to scan because many cases, if developers compile the application and upload, it might be done differently from month to month. That's why it's so important to start automating this scan as soon as possible to ensure that we have consistency from scan to scan. Here we have two entry points. It's a Java application with a single war file, and we have some JavaScript files. Both have been selected as an entry point. Now this is a very clean pre-scan. Most applications are going to have a lot more information on this screen. You're going to have a red 
orange or green indicator telling us what the status of each module is. This is a good opportunity to identify what could be removed from the upload, things that just are not relevant, certain components, etc. And perhaps a good idea now to create that Veracode.zip step to ensure that the proper application components and the properly built application are being uploaded to be scanned. What's significant about this is that Veracode uses this to understand the security posture of the application. Let's say that you're using Log4j. Log4j may have 100 functions. If your application calls Log4j in two of the 100 functions, the static engine will look at those two data flows, but not the other 98. If we uploaded Log4j and check that as an entry point, the static engine will look at all 100 functions and give us likely a bunch of false positives from those other 98 functions that we're not using. For that, you want to leverage software composition analysis, which will tell us if we have any outdated third-party or open source libraries, and if those libraries have any vulnerabilities that we should be concerned about. That's going to help provide you with a much cleaner scan and reduce any false positives. Okay, our scan is completed. It took about four minutes, and if I click in the scan name, I can see that review module screen again, where we're seeing here that we have 10.4 megabytes of application. It took just under four minutes to scan. And because we told Jenkins to wait for the results, once the job was submitted, it waited for the results to complete where it could determine whether or not it passed policy. This will then pass or fail the build. The other thing it will do is also bring the Veracode results here into the Jenkins job so that you have a summary view of the findings. This is handy, but it does require the build to wait for the scan to complete. Depending on how long your scan takes will determine whether or not you want to do this. It's a good idea to have a Veracode consultation call to review your packaging to see if there's any optimizations that can be made either by splitting the application up or doing other build optimizations to help make this scan go faster. If that still is not enough, then check into the Veracode pipeline scanner, which is designed to break the pipeline with a very short static scan and help you do things like break on a merge as an example. But the static policy scan still does some heavy lifting like flaw matching and things like that and ultimately is going to be what we look at for governance to understand if the application is passing its security policy. So by using the pipeline scanner you can help reduce flaws earlier in the process and then when we get to a Jenkins build ideally this here will pass and become a verification step for teams on an ongoing basis. The last thing we'll cover in this video is configuring Veracode static scanning for a pipeline scan. You can go into the pipeline syntax generator and you'll find Veracode upload and scan with Veracode pipeline. Here we enter in the details of our application. We want to enter in our API ID and key. And it is a good idea to have those set as global variables so that they don't show up in the build log. And you simply insert this pipeline script into your job. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for your time and have a great day.